How's it going everybody? Uh, my name is Theo Bennett and I'm one of the tutors here at MCAT Self Prep. And today we're going to be talking about one of the most requested topics that we get here um, at MCAT Self Prep and that is how to create the best MCAT study plan. And the best MCAT study plan is really going to vary depending on your given timeline. And so hopefully we can provide some nuance uh, and some advice that will be helpful uh, whether you're just starting out in your journey um, for MCAT prep or you're trying to modify an existing MCAT study plan, or if you're just curious about, you know, what it takes to become a doctor. One of the most common questions that we get here at MCAT Self Prep as tutors is, how many months should I study for the MCAT? And I think this is a great question. It gets at the heart of the matter of sort of how much preparation is required for the MCAT. But instead, I'd like to reframe that question to something that is a little bit more concrete. A better question to ask yourself is, how many hours should I study for the MCAT? Because it doesn't matter whether you study for a year or two months, uh, if you only study for maybe one hour every week for a year, that's obviously not gonna be as effective as studying all day, every day for, for two months. And so really, when it comes to studying for the MCAT, you need to come up with an hourly goal um, that can then be broken down into specific weeks and specific months. Um, and that hourly goal should reflect the improvement that you're trying to see for the MCAT, as well as your individual circumstances when it comes to your own journey. There are a lot of different factors that are going to end up affecting how much time you should study for the MCAT. One possible scenario is that you've taken the MCAT before. Maybe English isn't your first language. Maybe it's been a few years before you, or since you've taken pre-med classes. And all of these factors can be significant challenges when it comes to studying for the MCAT. And in order to see the same improvement, you yourself might need to actually study more hours than someone else who has just finished with all their pre-med classes. Um, maybe English is their first language. Maybe they take, are taking the MCAT for the first time. Uh, and so really, we want to take a holistic approach when it comes to how many hours you should study. So the first step in creating a good MCAT study plan is take a diagnostic test, right? You want to take a test it doesn't have to be um, a test that you pay for. There are actually a lot of free options. Basically, every MCAT prep company comes out with their own free half-length exam, and you can just take one of those. Um, it'll give you a rough approximation about where your, where your starting baseline is. Um, and then you want to think about sort of your goal score. And when I'm working with students, I don't necessarily ask them for, for their goal score because, of course, everyone would love to you know, score a perfect score on the MCAT. Uh, but instead, I ask them, what is the lowest score that you would be absolutely happy with? Because that's really the score that we're shooting for. Um, obviously, you know, if you end up surpassing that goal, that's great. And, you know, we'll, we'll still continue to raise the bar because you always want to be pushing yourself. Uh, but, but really, we want to think about a realistic goal. And so once you've had your, your starting score and your goal score, you can compute the difference. And actually here at MCAT Self Prep, we have a really cheap and affordable option um, that will do all of this uh, work in terms of coming up with an hourly goal that you should study for the MCAT. We have this really advanced algorithm that we've built uh, that factors in those holistic attributes, like uh, whether you've taken the MCAT before and, you know, if you particularly, if you had a particularly difficult time in a certain subject, and then we'll compute uh, a goal score that will, that should work for you. If you're not interested in using our MCAT study plan creator, uh, you can kind of use the rough barometer of uh, studying for about 10 hours a week for about a month should give you about a point to a point and a half of an increase in your MCAT score. And so that's a good way to kind of get a rough ballpark in terms of how many hours you should be studying. Now, once you've figured out how many hours you need to study for the MCAT in total, based on your extenuating circumstances, what you want to do is break that big hourly goal down into smaller, more manageable chunks. And the first way that you want to segment this hourly goal is to divide your overall MCAT study plan hours into the content phase, and then also into what we call the boot camp phase, which is gonna be a lot more uh, aligned to taking practice tests and practice questions and kind of really applying the, the content that you've learned. And so most people, and, and sort of the advice that I got too when I was starting out on my MCAT journey was to really focus on taking as many practice tests as you can, take them early, take them often, uh, but what I found out when I was trying to go through this process on my own is really when I was taking those practice tests at the beginning, it wasn't really helping me as well because I was missing a lot of questions just because I hadn't learned the material yet. And so I felt like it was almost a waste of those questions. And if I would have just saved them for a little bit later, it would have helped. So 
as you're going through the content phase, without getting you know too much into the weeds, you want to sprinkle in a few practice question sessions. And at using our free e-course, what we do is we basically walk you through all of the AMC problems and we create these little mini exams that you can take along the way to kind of gauge your progress and, and track you know, areas where you need to improve. But we save the majority of those really long eight hour practice tests for the final month um, in, in what we call the boot camp phase. So basically these are the two most important phases. The content phase where your overall main focus is just getting through all the content, trying to learn it and absorb it as best you can. And then also having uh, a phase where you can really apply that content that you just learned. And that's primarily going to be through practice tests and practice questions. The other thing that's really important when it comes to creating an MCAT study plan is to plan it out far in advance. So that way you can make your life as easy and as streamlined as possible. So for me, myself, I was studying uh, for about one semester part time and then about a month full time. And so during that semester, I purposefully made it as easy as possible. I took the bare minimum of credits. I took mostly easy classes. And so that way I had more time to devote to the MCAT um, when that time came. Because I've seen with a lot of students that I've worked with, we, we have these grand plans and, you know, it's, it's a really important test. And so we feel like we can, you know, kick it into a higher gear. But at the end of the day, that's going to really end up not being sustainable and you might burn out. Uh, and also life just happens. And so we need to create a few maybe a few weeks of buffer room just in case you get set back along the way. Because again, that's going to happen to the vast majority of us. So to give you a sense of what a good MCAT study plan looks like, we've created three examples. These are going to be examples that are going to vary in time and in terms of the overall hours that these students are hoping to study uh, because they have different goals in terms of the improvement that they're trying to see. And so you can just use them as sort of a template, but remember that you're going to want to craft your study plan around your personal goals and sort of the timeline that you have. This first plan is someone who's just planning to study over the summer, right? So they're going to basically dedicate their entire summer sort of studying full time every week for the whole summer uh, and taking the MCAT exam at the end of August. This has some benefits because this person can take the exam and get their score back long before they apply to medical school. Because again, we, re we recommend taking the MCAT so that you have your score back before May. And so if this person took it in August, of let's say 2021, they would be applying in May of 2022. This person is spending about three and a half months uh, studying about six to 700 hours in total. Uh, again, there's gonna be some wiggle room. You might not be perfect. You might not hit your hour goal exactly, but this is gonna be perfect for someone who's trying to see less than 12 points of improvement, maybe more in the eight to 10 point range. And also someone who hasn't taken the MCAT before, who hasn't had uh, a significant gap in terms of the, the years that it's been since they've taken their pre-med classes. And so this would be someone who's taking the MCAT over the summer, uh, maybe their junior or, or senior year. For this next person uh, in our study plan number two, this is someone who's planning on studying well over a thousand hours. So this is going to be someone who is either retaking the MCAT and is hoping to see about 15 points of improvement or this is someone who's taking the MCAT for the first time and they're trying to see more like 18 to 25 points of improvement. So again, a significant jump from their original diagnostic test. This person, again, is probably blocking out six months of full-time study. So basically they're planning far in advance so that they can take time off of work, take time off of school, and really devote a significant portion of time to studying exclusively for the MCAT. Because again, they're hoping to see a, a very significant increase in their score. For this last study plan, this is someone who's planning on studying part-time over about eight months. So this person is planning on studying for a significant amount of time part-time, so that way they can keep on working at their job or keep on taking full-time classes. Uh, but again, they still have that final month of full-time study. So at the end of the day, it doesn't matter where, whether you study for a month or two years. It really matters the total cumulative hours that you spend on the MCAT. Another thing also to, to think about is spreading out that time over a longer period of time leads to a little bit of diminishing returns because, again, I don't remember what I studied a year ago. And so you're just going to tend to forget things that you've studied a long time before. And so I would recommend compressing that time frame as much as you can. But again, it's going to vary a lot depending on your extenuating circumstances. I also totally remember when I was starting out on my MCAT journey that 
it just, it just seemed like this insurmountable obstacle, right? I was looking down the barrel of about 700, 800 hours, and I just felt like there was no way I could get it all done. But by breaking it down week by week and even day by day, I had a really manageable goals. I was just planning on studying three hours this day, one hour this day, four hours the next day. And each of those individual goals seemed a lot more manageable and feasible at the time. So it doesn't matter how you slice it. You really just need one phase where you can dedicate most of your time to just getting through the content and learning the content and not worrying about your practice scores or practice tests, anything like that. And then you have your final section where you're really just trying to get familiar with the MCAT and how long the test is, taking as many practice tests as possible. So that way, when it comes to test day, it just feels like another day. You're absolutely used to it and you're used to the style of questions and the level of difficulty that they're testing. I'll post my trajectory as well here, uh, just so you can see that, again, all of these trajectories are not super smooth, right? Uh, there were a lot of ups and downs and big bumps in the road. And so at the end of the day, it just requires a lot of hard work and persistence and honestly just hope that things are gonna keep getting better. Uh, so really spending time to prioritize your mental health and avoiding burnout and also just ways to improve your productivity can pay off huge dividends. And so I would recommend as well, planning out ways that you'll be able to take care of yourself both mentally and phys physically, uh, so that way you can perform best on, on test day. So again, I hope this helps. My whole philosophy in life is to study smarter and not harder, and I definitely made a lot of mistakes in my own personal journey, and so we hope to share kind of the lessons that we've learned, so that way you can uh, avoid some of those bumps in the road in your own journey. And so we'll be walking you through lots of study and testing strategies and tips so that way you can learn from the best. So thanks again for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe and, and even share this video with some of your friends who might be about to start on their own MCAT journey uh, and stick around because we'll be releasing a lot more videos. Thanks.